Hello everybody, Sherman here and today is the 12th of January. It's almost midnight here in Singapore. It's 11.34 p.m. actually. So I was kind of in the mood to do a video. Um, I was watching the S&P, just looking at this. Uh, I just thought I'd just share my thoughts about this. So it's nice, it's nice sometimes to get a buy on the S&P because it's kind of trendy. You get it right, it moves quite far, like you see here. See, if you if you kind of pick the right um, the right place to buy, it, it's, it can be quite a friendly, uh, friendly pair to play because it's very trendy, you see. It goes in one direction for a long, long time. So you see, if you can get it right, it's, it's, a, it's a good thing. But now, but now the the the, the S and P right now, it's kind of here, right? It's tricky. It's tricky. You know, you see this kind of slow crawls. They they are always kind of tricky to trade. So, when it comes to slow crawls, I generally don't like to stay in there for too long, because these 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 can be 50-50. And you know, if in 50-50 moves, it's like flipping a coin, right? Um, I see, I can see possibilities up. I can see possibilities now, you know, <laughs> there are possibilities everywhere. So in good trading, uh, good trading, it's about knowing how to take the losses, knowing how to take losses. Good traders can take losses. If, if some of people have checked my, uh, my FX book account, when I was doing this for those investors, they wanted to see me trade. Yeah. I have losses too. It's very normal. But then you can still walk away with a lot of money, right? So so losses is part part of trading. If someone tells says that they never take losses because they never take a trade in their entire life, or they trade out stop loss, that's it. Right? So they, they'll, they'll never lose because they have no stop loss. Either the account goes bust or the account makes money. But most probably it will go bust anyway. No stop loss. So Looking at this, how 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 would I trade this? Uh, but taking the bias is always tricky for something like that, you know. It's, it's tricky. This is possible. I can see this trend line over here. So that's the first thing that I can see. But I also know that most like that, uh, they, these are all stack stack moves. These slow crawls, they're all basically quite stacked. You see, if you if you if you map everything, if you map all the swings like that, it's basically stacked from the top to the to right here. So what does that mean? Stack. I don't I, I don't know what other people call it, but but I call it a, st a stack play, like a like a stack of cards. You know, if this one wants to fall through, you can just simply cut right through the whole piece and just come right there. This one single move down move down is is what scares me. If you take any buy wrongly, you got because I'm always not I'm not looking at take profit. Take profit to me is secondary. The 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 stop loss is is the, it's the main thing. Stop loss is number one. So when we talk about trading, we always talk about stop loss first. Professional trading, we always talk about the stop loss first. If we ever talk about what's my target level, how high, what how much money can I make? That 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 is not that is not professional trading. You know, if a fund manager ever tells me he had he manages six million, ten million, then he always talk about stop about take profit. It's like it's kind of mad. I I I I seriously have my doubts whether or not the guy can really trade. You know, so um, we gotta really gotta see where your stop loss is. Okay, so this is the main fear. So good defense, no knowing where the, where problems can be is, is the main thing. That's that's one. If price of if price, if I, if you do want to take the buy, this one needs to somehow come down to this level because things like S and P at this level, at the very minimum, if you, if you trade anywhere here, it's diddling around in the middle and it's quite dangerous to do stuff like that. Even if this flies up very high, it's not something that uh, that uh, it's something if you follow to trade this like this, let's say a breakout like so. Maybe about there, about here. 
I will be out already. There's no way that I will stay in this and then just like, what, <laughs> she got a 4,000? You know, it's like more like one is to one, one is to just a little bit, that's it. Just take it and go. Like uh, you, you would see there on Bitcoin actually, you can always look at Bitcoin. So when Bitcoin went into a huge push, yeah, you can just able to take up pieces as it went up to 41,000. That's, that's okay, that's okay, you know. It's, so no matter how the market moves, we have, if we have a way to take money out of it, that's the main thing, right, as a, as a day trader. So that, that is one way, one is to one. But this this move, this um, this push back down, and then it goes back up, that's okay also. You know, that's also nice. That, that, that uh, like this one was based off that, right? This this buy here that we, that the, the forecast, it was based off that. So if it comes back down, and then, if, it, if we think that there's like a like a push uh, from push from from here one two maybe three four that that is a trade idea that could make sense but the most important thing is to wait for a proper pullback first right and don't just buy because you reach this this line here no no you gotta gotta wait for bullish price action and 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 have a way to intraday trade to the stop side. All right, go go to go to intraday. This is an eight hour time frame, so you will go much lower to intraday trade this up, right? Uh, so minimum that's that's one pullback that's possible. Then of course you could always get something even bigger like that. So you see, there's a lot of possible kind of play. Could be this one. It could be this one, also possible, unfortunately. So pullback could be on this size, could be on this size. And then the worst pullback would be, the worst pullback, I did this one. Uh, these are just possibilities here. Yeah, this is the worst, the worst pullback. <laughs> the worst pullback possible, this one. Of course, since I'm aware of that, if it does come down, I'll be really interested to write this, to, to, to trade this down. But we don't have that yet. Right, we don't have that yet. So we don't have that yet, right. So it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not happened yet. So if it happens, we'll see what, we'll see what I can do then, it's okay. So you see, I always draw these things like candle, meaning it breaks the trend line. So you're not going to sell here thinking it's going to do that because it's just one of many possibilities. But being aware of possibilities and then waiting for time factor to play out and then we'll decide accordingly how to enter the trade. Yeah, but so these are these are the different biases that we, we have. So any bias upside requires a proper pullback and we know that this type of big pullbacks could happen. Right, and then the worst crazy case is this one could happen. Right, and then when that happens, when that happens, then of course it would look like uh, it will be something like this on the weekly, like here, like this. Yeah, of course people buy low, sell high. So that's that's the craziest one. So I have this right there, S and P bear. See, no hindsight. It's this is I I put the worst case worst case scenario. So if, when this one fell, did anybody see that? Oh no, it's uptrend, right? Dangerous stuff. Gorish, remember, someone needs to lose money. Someone needs to, to kill everybody before. Someone needs to die here so that someone can buy low and sell high. Institutions, right? Those. Um, yeah, so that's S&P. Mm, so this so this was just gun. I was just playing play around with it. It's it's cute stuff. Cute stuff. So but anyway, I've not figured out much about it yet. But I don't find it too useful for now. So I'm just trying to see if there's any anything you can do with it, but uh, no not I have no ideas on it for now. You know? Sometimes there's a way to backtest stuff, you know, you spend a lot of hours, days, months, just testing. So, okay, you see the decks here, you see the decks. 
the strength. This could come, continue down, break this low. Yeah, maybe, maybe. But I don't think so. I always think that price needs to move in a way to, you know, mess people up. The best way for this to mess people up uh, is for it to come back to the trade. Too. That would be the best way to mess people up. Anyway, here, and then come back down. Oh, this would be a good, good move to mess some people up. So I actually hope that uh, this come down enough and people will want to be the trend. But you know, the trend was nice when it was like here, like here was nice. But once you get close to this bottom, uh, it's not so good, you know? It's not so good. So uh, I think this one, I would really much like for this to actually move back up. I hope that's what will happen. But is there a trade yet? No, no, it's not yet. It's just an idea. So we formulate an idea. So you see that? So the box is so, yeah, just an idea. So we're going to be watching this over the next, the next week, the next maybe two weeks from now. Oh no, 22nd March. Yeah, yeah February. Yeah. No, more, more than two weeks, uh, three, four weeks maybe. So we'll just be watching it. We'll see what happens. Yeah. Um, oh, go. Okay, I think I just posted this on trading view. All right. So there, you see, I have this go buy. Yeah, let's click on it. So what I hope for is basically someone asked me whether what's my target level. So I said no. Uh, none. Only stop loss levels are important. So the stop loss is this cross over here. Could it come? It comes here. It goes higher. I mean, it goes higher. So it's even better, right? So, but we don't worry about us. We don't worry about take profit because we don't want to be take profit experts. We are risk management experts, right? We manage the risk properly. Manage the stop loss properly. If you lose, you lose it right here. Because why? Right? See this one, two, three. One, two, three. It is okay. Can this go up? Yeah, maybe. Who, who who knows? So you just have to, uh, you know, just trade it accordingly, right? Trade it accordingly. If it's Friday and you want to go sleep, okay, just take profit. It's okay. But if it if it's like Wednesday and you think it's time to crawl, just just let it go. You know, let's see where it goes. But of course, this is pretty strong. This is pretty strong too. So don't just um. <laughs> just let this come back down and take, take out for break even, right? So it might so you just take some money and then just let the rest go. So see you see, see what happens. So loss is more important than take profit. Um, how could I have for a Bitcoin? Ooh, look at that, man. Bitcoin. So we look at Bitcoin. Uh, let's go look at the, yeah, nice. So yeah, nice, nice time factor impulse, correction impulse. So in this case, it worked out nice. Also, it's a third, of third one, two, three. You have one, two, three, and then you have one, two, three. So the third of the third of the third, perfect. You know, and over here you see here, live forecast again. So push up. So here we are already looking for the buy, right? Already looking for the buy. And uh, putting some support resistance in into the play was also a good idea. If anybody did not get that in, get in the buy, of course, this is a bad place to buy, right? This is where people are already taking profit. This was actually a very good place to... Uh, when you came back down again, right? For people who played who play support resistance, that was the place, right? See, it cracked right through. So this is the this this is the place where the, the origin of the move basically, right? Where where price decided to break this top. So this is this level is significant. That's why you have that. But people who play this are not playing for are not playing for this big move. They're not playing for this, you know. People who, who play 
support and resistance uh, people who only play for just a couple of pips, maybe big lots. Uh, but you know, anywhere like six pip, ten pips, or whatever it is here, just a just some kind of re, just some kind of reaction here to there. Maybe that's it. Here to this top level. Maybe they're out already. They will not be waiting for this to go all the way up there because that's not what support resistance people usually play. Right. And also because this is somewhere in the middle. It's not it wasn't like oil. Oil was right at the bottom. Right. This is like right at the bottom. So oil if it breaks here, the oil was right at the bottom. That's why it was gonna go up. This is somewhere in the middle. So playing saying that this will stop here and then go up there is not not correct. Right. So one instance, people who play the bounce are just playing for a reaction. So those are not swing trades, basically. Swing trades on the other hand are playing for this big move. Right, the big move that's like holy cow, you know. So that's a that's a difference. Reaction and swing trading are kind of different, right? In swing trading, you always have some kind of some some piece in the middle over here, right? These 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 pieces in the middle like this, and also such a strong move up. The people who are now uh, playing this are all playing using the moving averages, right? But of course, you see they they all playing the, the moving average, but. The, over here is where people who are only familiar with moving averages, of course, they get killed right here. They're eaten alive, basically. So it's a time for everything. So it's important to know a bit of everything, you know, just like Bruce Lee, you know. You know, his style of fighting, you just get take the best of everything. And then what's, what's useless, just discard it. So, and also knowing when to use what, you know. Some, sometimes moving averages is good, sometimes it's pretty useless. Right? Sometimes support resistance is good, but support resistance has its flaws. You don't really in a place like this. You don't buy here and hope that it gets there. This is just one of those examples where, um, where it it looked like it worked, but there'll be many cases where you don't work as well. So we have to be aware of that. Right? The people who trade support resistance, particularly just that alone, they're just looking for a small reaction trade, and then they're usually out of the market by then. Right? Otherwise, you place support resistance at this very top. You know, if you're thinking because, oh, yeah, it moved very far. Yep, right here. This is my resistance. And then you, oh, you know, bad things happen. So uh, in this case, if it's, it, it's, uh, it's where, you know, the idea was not too good. If it took just a couple of pips out, I think they would have survived. This one is another support resistance. You see? So, yeah, you get the reaction. You see those reactions? This reaction is what they all they play for. They don't play. You don't play for those big moves, right? Uh, oh, it's at the top. When the top, it came to the low. So now it's up here. It should come back to the low again. Yeah, not really, right? Not really. Usually, usually swing in swing trades, as you can see here, there was a forecast here by Sherman Chu. So it looking weak. So there's a move down. And this is, this is more like swing trades, you see. They're more like swing trades. So you're thinking of one, a two, and then this was the three. And of course, there's some sideways over here. But this and these are supposed to be what you're looking for. <coughs> Sorry. And then there's something in the middle here. So this and this has some, this is the first, this is the third, and there's something here in the middle. Right. So swing traders and support resistance traders are a little bit different in, in the way they actually handle the, the trade management. You know, uh, if you know both, it's it's good. It's good if you know both. Right, um, but I would say type factor trading it's kind of like more superior basically because uh, you're not trading just trading support resistance or swing you're trading with the element the, the one more that one more important dimension the dimension of time very important yeah so now we are we are up here we dived well to be expected I want to go up fast we come down fast too. Right down to the moving average there too. See, does that mean it's downside? Uh, there's a chance that uh, this could, this could continue and then just drop like this, possible, and then maybe it moves more up and then it start to go up and then this one might go up or this might be a correction and it might come down. It it, it might drop. It might drop, but uh, I would say right now this sharp move down could be anything. It can be anything. Sharp move one one wave down doesn't really mean much. But uh, 
there's just so much you could do. So you just have to wait right now. This one could do stuff like uh, could just do maybe just do a double top like this. Anything is possible. So based off this time frame, there's not really nothing much to say, except uh, for people who 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 are uh, uh, people who have you know played I think anywhere here if they if they if they uh, just taking bits and pieces off. Um, the as this move goes up, they take bits and pieces out of the market. That's perfectly fine too. No need to always hold here and reach the top. Right? Things like things like this one also. This was okay. One sharp move, you don't know what's going on. But when it broke and then it went sideways, yes, that means you have a structure for for one more up as well. Right? But this move meant nothing. So if you take that for a cue, then that's one example. If this one sharp move, sharp move, break up and once it goes sideways. If this one breaks up and goes sideways, yeah, maybe you could try for for something upside as well. But you have to wait for all that to happen. So we just have to wait, you know? Time factor, very important. Let's wait. Let's wait and see what happens. So nice Bitcoin. Yes. Generally, uh, I think something I want to say about winning and losing traders. I think most people, uh, when they lose in, 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 in Forex, right? Uh, usually there is a pattern. And the pattern usually goes like that. We will we'll, um, we'll win some, we win, we win a little bit, win a little, L-I-T-T-L-E. You know, you win a little, you win a little, you win a little. And then after that, when something big happens, then there's a big loss. Because why no stop loss? Uh, lot size too huge. Big. So this is the pattern of those trades, those those accounts that lose. Uh. So what's what's the other? So what's the opposite of this? If this is a how what a losing account looks like, that means a, a winning account generally is the direct opposite of this. They will lose a little. Lose a little bit, lose a little bit, lose, 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 but then they have one big win. This one. Because they are trying to catch this. Whereas those that are trying to, um, traders who are trying to win and win a little bit, are not looking to catch this. You see? So, um, so, uh, from, from my experience working with uh, investors, I think some of the investors actually need to cultivate their minds to understand what uh, good trading is actually, you know. Uh, sometimes there are losses on account, but it's okay to lose if it's within the per, the parameters. Is it 1% loss, 2% loss? I say it's, let's say it's like a hierarchy account, right? The hierarchy account. If you lost the first time, maybe you lost 1K. All right, you came at nine k. You lost another time. You lost. You had another bad, stupid losing streak. You're like, what the hell is going on? And then you lost a fourth time. So only the fifth time, you came one hundred and six thousand. Just one. So you lost, 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 lost. The account is down four percent. Suddenly it became one hundred and six thousand. One move you make, so ten percent. Because as it went, so maybe some people scale in. You know, it's clearly that's possible too. So, like for example, you see here one example of scaling. You see, it broke, you scaled it, stop is here, go out, you break, you, you scale it again, you got to stop here. Possible too. You go out, you broke, you scale it, you buy again, then you start to shift your stop. This one, you shift up, here you shift up. And these two are not supporting this one, it goes up again. So at some point here, you're going to get stopped out. But you really scale in the position, you see. So so when 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 a person is is uh focused on stuff like that, that's that's how that's like the anatomy of a of a of a trader. You can see them scaling in actually basically. Because this is what this is what they like to trade, basically. We move your, they're looking out for this 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 big move, right? 
Right. So then there is another kind of trading. Uh, the people who scalp, you see. Uh, I've seen some accounts where people scalp. It's like the lot size is like really huge, 40 standard lots. Man. Right. But they are like only looking for three pips. Maybe six pips. Maximum like this. That's it. When they lose, they lose, yeah, they lose, uh, say, about three pips as well. And then the, now when you think of scalping, right, the very interesting thing about scalping is you think, oh, it's scalping, you know, I can trade any time of day. I just take a little bit here, a little bit there in the morning, a little bit here, a little bit there in the afternoon. Then at night, I just scalp a little bit. They actually make a lot of money. But that's not really the case. Those scalpers that I've seen who do really well, Right. They only scalp. They, they, they only have a, the scalp is on for like a couple of seconds, literally. And they only scalping like at during periods where institutions are out, maybe like during lunch, maybe at uh, maybe around like you know in the New York, maybe around 12 to 1 when people are out for lunch. That's when they scalp. When the market is basically flat like this. So let's say high volatility, high volatility, this only just, just in, this is when they are scalping. Because they are afraid of this, this this volatility, they don't want any of it. They just want the, the you know, the, like, yeah, this, the ranging, the stuff that, that uh, they just want to take a little bit out of here, but it's easy and predictable. So when we think of scalping, we think of making money at, at all times of the day, but actually good scalping or scalping that walked away from net win actually scalp during very specific hours only. And on the other hand, swing trading is, you know, there are trades going on in every hour, basically, because the trades are take a few hours to mature. But scalping is only very specific hours and going for very, very small amount of pips, you know. So I think that might be a myth buster right there. That scalping is actually, you know, working for only maybe two hours and that's it. No more touching it. The the, the account after, after um, after the the money is made, and be very disciplined as well because you know what can go wrong with scalping, right? One wrong trade, you try, suddenly the account just goes for hundred k to eighty thousand because just went just became mad for a moment. So be very careful. What goes up fast can also crash very quickly, right? So scalping requires a lot of discipline and uh, being able to turn, walk away from the computer once the two hours is up, you know, no more touching the PC. So, well, that's my take. Uh, just, a, just a quick share from what I've seen uh, the, from people who are good at this, at this industry. And there are very few. Okay. So that is my sharing. It's around midnight already. Take care. And, uh, Hope to upload a video again soon. Bye-bye.